So the Heartfire Network was created to address timely questions related to heart failure therapeutics. And with the, often with the niche focusing on sort of phase two trials, things that need a proof of concept study to energize their expansion in phase three pivotal studies. And so this is in that category, right? So it's in the sweet spot for the Heartfire Network. It's a you know, medium-sized phase two trial designed to address a timely question. As Dr. McMurray said during the panel uh, discussion, there, this interface between diabetes and heart failure is really important, right? There's 40% of people with heart failure have diabetes, and so the idea of finding something that works for them uh, either improves their heart failure, that would be the biggest winner, or at least is a safe anti-diabetes drug um, would be beneficial. So that was the, the main motivation, and it, it's in the sweet spot for the network, that's why the size trial we did, and the um, specific application of looking at the potential therapeutic benefit for a diabetes drug in heart failure patients. And then another aspect to that was that patients with advanced heart failure do have these metabolic abnormalities in, in their failing hearts, and that includes insulin resistance, and in skeletal muscle and probably the heart, GLP-1 does seem to benefit uh, and lessen insulin resistance and increase glucose availability to the, to the muscle. These abnormalities in cardiac metabolism become more pronounced as heart failure progresses and as the myocardium develops a more advanced phenotype of, of heart, heart failure. And that, so we tried to pick a clinical population that would match that, an advanced heart failure population. And we did several of the inclusion criteria that sort of bias that way. One of them, we pick people after a hospitalization. Uh, that, that always identifies sicker people, right? They have high risk for subsequent events, either death or rehospitalization or other mischief. In addition, um, we required that they got hospitalized even though they were on a full cadre of medications. We required that they got hospitalized even though they were on at least a moderate dose of diuretic. And so all of these factors along with the fact that heart failure network sites are often at big academic referral centers, tended to favor getting sicker patients with more advanced degrees of heart failure, but that didn't, that was by design. So the main findings were that uh, it, it, we did not observe a beneficial effect of the GLP-1 uh, agonist liraglutide, a once a day subcutaneous proven diabetes drug for, we did not find that it helped people's outcomes with heart failure. Rather, um, most of our endpoints were neutral with no excess signal of detriment and certainly no signal of benefit. If anything, the small trends in this small study were favoring placebo rather than liraglutide. So there was certainly no, again, you have to be cautious in a small trial, but a small trial even if things are trending that way, you can at least be fairly confident there's no big effect we missed. There's no big beneficial effect we missed. I, I really don't think there is. In terms of whether it's safe or not, this trial isn't really powered for that. And there are some very big ongoing trials. The most important one is something called the LEADER trial that's um, funded by the maker of this same drug, Novo Nordisk, and they're enrolling 9,000 patients, most of who have pre-existing cardiovascular disease, and they're following them for many years, and that's what a safety trial should look like, um, and, and we'll see what happens with that. But for this one, we're looking for a therapeutic benefit for the sake of heart failure status, we didn't see it. Among patients with advanced heart failure, don't preferentially use GLP-1 agonists for the sake of improving their heart failure status. We don't see that signal. If people are established on these medications and seem to be doing well, I wouldn't pull them off of it for this. Um, and I think that middle ground of if you had a patient with advanced heart failure and they weren't having adequate blood sugar control, I don't know what to say about whether I would initiate this, if you felt it was the right drug for them from a diabetes point of view, that's fine, but don't do it for the sake of, of their heart failure status because that signal isn't there. And in terms of the broader safety questions, stay tuned for these bigger trials that will be better equipped to address that.